Welcome back to another episode of History Snippets. I'm Sarah, I'm the curator at Edwards Place, and today we are going to talk about Robert Chick. Robert Chick was a neighbor of the Edwards family. He lived just down at 3rd and Carpenter, which is now where a railroad runs through, and that's just southwest of where the Edwardses lived at Edwards Place. Robert Chick was born in 1824 in Kentucky, and by the time he moved to Illinois, he was placing ads in the Daily Illinois State Register for his well-digging business. He claimed in his advertisement that he had dug hundreds of wells in the city of Springfield, and he had also cleaned and repaired pumps. Notably, Robert Chick fought in the Civil War. He was part of the Springfield, Illinois Light Artillery. It was known as Vaughn's Battery, and it was mustered in 1862 at Camp Butler. Out of the 300 men that were in that battery, one was killed in combat, but 22 were killed by disease. Chick, having fortune on his side during the war, survived with no wounds and came back to Springfield in good physical health. However, that seems to be the last time that Chick really had a smooth turn of events. His bad luck started in 1868. On August 18th of that year, there was a Democratic ratification meeting in Springfield. Chick was there because he was to fire a gun salute in honor of the nomination of Seymour and Blair. Just to put that time in context, Seymour and Blair ran on a ticket uh, against U.S. Grant, and they opposed Reconstruction, Black equality, and Black suffrage. In fact, they ran on a very explicit white supremacy motto of this is white men's country, let white men rule. Back to Chick's experience at this ratification meeting. As Chick was preparing his salute, there was a mishap. In the words of the newspaper, a premature misfire blew the man's left hand off and also had extreme burns to his face and his chest. His hand had to be immediately completely amputated. Now remember, Robert Chick was a well digger. It, it was immediately apparent that Chick would not be able to continue his work. Imagine what he must have felt. In one moment, he basically lost his livelihood. I mean, imagine the dread he must have felt to think about what his future was going to look like. However, there was a small comfort to him. People that were at the ratification meeting immediately stepped in to help Robert Chick and his family during that time. Several people donated to the benefit, notably General McClernand and Benjamin Edwards, who owned Edwards Place. Benjamin Edwards was the biggest contributor to this fund. He donated $50, which doesn't seem like a lot in today's money, but at the time in 1868, that was worth over $2,000 today. Robert Chick was then able to lead a quiet life after his unfortunate accident until 1903. When he was in his 70s, Robert Chick's hearing had deteriorated to such a degree that he was considered to be slightly deaf. But he still had to get along with his business like anybody else did, so he makes his way to the grocery store one day that was at 10th and Miller Street. Now, there was and is a train track that runs right through that area, and there was a train that needed to go through at this exact time that Robert was going to the grocery store. The engineer of the train, Engineer Preston, saw Chick on the tracks and surely blew the whistle trying to warn Chick that he was coming. And unfortunately, because Robert couldn't hear him, he was struck by that train. An ambulance was immediately called and came to try and help Robert Chick, but it was apparent that they were not going to be able to do anything for him. They took him over to his daughter's house and he had passed away within the hour. You can even go visit Robert Chick's grave today. He is in McKinney Cemetery, which is just west of the Abraham Lincoln Capitol Airport. I hate to leave you on a sad tone for our history snippet for today, so I just do want to note that it's very clear that Robert Chick did live a full life in between the times that he had his unfortunate accidents. He had a family having three grown children that were still alive when he passed, and he survived for a long while after living through the trauma of war and loss of limb with people who very clearly supported him throughout his life. And that's important. So look forward to hearing more of these stories throughout this season of History Snippets. Thanks for joining us.